Oh yes, they are rather marvellous, aren't they? Look at them. Now this video is a very special video because it's the first video I've made where I've surpassed 100 subscribers. Oh yes. And you know what Google sends you when you pass 100 subscribers? They send you a, a play button, oh, an award. So this is my award, which YouTube definitely did send me. And I didn't scribble it myself. You know what's interesting about surpassing 100 subscribers? I never told anyone to subscribe. I did that mostly because whenever someone tells me to subscribe on their video, I, you know, I get slightly annoyed. I'm like, yes, it's not 2012 anymore. We all know how it works. So I'm going to be reviewing all of these wonderful looking fine liners. So I'm going to be comparing the Unipin fine line the Pentel Pointer Liner, the Faber-Castell Fine Liner Pen, the Pigma Micron, the Artline Drawing System Pen, and the Copic Multiliner SP. All of these fine liners are 0.3mm in size, and except for the Copic Multiliner, which is 0.35, because I can barely see the difference. So before I really start digging into these pens, I'd just like to say they're all very good quality fine liners and you probably couldn't go wrong buying any of them. Actually, I'll remove this one. These are all very good fine liners and you probably couldn't go wrong buying any of them uh, because they're all made by companies that can make a good quality product. Right. But the differences between most of them, you really are splitting hairs and it is somewhat subjective as well. But the main feature that all of these have is that the ink they contain is meant to be fade proof and also waterproof unlike these cheap things here the artline 220 for example if i got this artline this cheaper artline pen and i did a bit of a drawing on it of something say for example and then and then i got a water brush and i went oh yes maybe i'll do some water coloring over it oh oh Terrible. What, what's happening? Now let's compare the difference with the ink out of one of these pens here. You really have to work on it to disturb the pigments off it. Yes, mm, yes. In fact, all of the inks in these pens are so incredibly durable that I did a little test paper here and I cut it in half and the other half sat in a boiling pot of water for an hour. And look at the difference. Can you see a difference? It was a simmering pot of water for an hour. It's like hardly any fading at all. So all of the inks in these are very impressive. So I've arranged these pens here in order of price, starting from the lowest cost, which are these two, these two cost the same, to the most expensive pen, the Copic Multiliner SP, which costs at least four times as much as one of these. So let's start reviewing the Unipin Fine Line Water and Fade Proof Pigment Ink. So the grip of this pen is um, kind of average. The plastic has a slight matte finish to it, which I find a matte finish plastic to offer less grip than a smooth plastic, believe it or not, but it's still an acceptable amount. So besides how it feels, the rest of the importance comes from the quality of the tip. And I did look at each tip from each pen under a microscope. So the tip on the Unipin Fine Line was a nice smooth rounded tip with virtually no imperfections at all and it performs very well. It's a pretty smooth line. The tip feels pretty hard and long lasting. Yes, yeah, so because the tip is also smooth and rounded it provides a good evenly thick line no matter what angle you hold it on until you get to ridiculously extreme angles where it doesn't work at all but that's normal. One thing which is extremely difficult to discover about these fine liners, or any fine liner, is how much ink they contain. That would be a big factor as to how much value you can actually get out of one of these pens. But I have a theory that the amount of ink that these things contains would probably directly correspond to the length of the tip they give you. So I measured each one. So the thickness was 0.73 millimeters thick. And the length, which is the most important part, 
was 1.25 millimeters thick. Now this is the thickness of the nib and you might be wondering well that's not actually 0.3 millimeters at all is it? Yes and you would be right because I'm pretty sure 0.3 millimeters is just a pretty accurate guess as to the line thickness you'll get out of this size nib. Because it's a rounded nib and not all of the paper can come in contact with the nib at the same time. So that will give you, you know, roughly about 0.3 millimeters. So anyway, 1.25 millimeters was the, the length of the uni pin nib. Next we come to the Pentel point liner. Now before I bought this pen, I didn't even know Pentel made fine liners. I thought they had completely forgotten how to make a good quality, fade proof, waterproof ink because all their other pens I've bought contained a, uh, a dye based ink. But this one performs really, really well. And it's very smooth. It feels less scratchy than the Unipin, only slightly though. And it has better grip that I find anyway, because it's got smoother plastic. It's got more surface area contact on my fingers. So the quality of the tip feels very nice. And the length of the tip 1.14 millimeters. The cap snaps on very softly as well. And I'm quite impressed with this one. Now let's talk about the Fiber Castell Pit Artist Pen Fineliner in 0.3 millimeters. Now I'm pretty sure 0.3 millimeters is probably the smallest tip you can get for a Pit Artist pen. And the grip on this pen, it's pretty good up on the upper part of the body, but on this thinner section, that rests inside the cap is just not as good. It's too thin and slippery for my dry fingertips. But what about the tip of the pen? Yes. Well, the Fiber Castell comes with the most longest tip I have seen in any fine liner. It's quite impressive. It measures at about 1.40 millimeters. I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how long it would be used for. It's probably the longest lasting pen here. So the first time I used this pen, I came to the conclusion that the tip on this pen feels more fibrous than any of the other tips. It just felt slightly more resistive. And if you look at the tip under a microscope, you see it's not perfectly rounded like these two. It kind of looks like that, I think. It almost has a strange kind of concave shape on one side of it. It doesn't affect the performance of it though. Interesting, the more I use it, the smoother the tip feels. Maybe I'm just getting used to it. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite, the Pigma Micron. These are extremely popular. Everyone seems to love them. So I bought one and I thought to myself, I'm bound to be impressed with this thing, but I was not impressed. The grip on it though seems to be quite good. It's smooth, grippy plastic. You can grip it higher up with, without much problem. Unlike the Faber-Castell, because this part here, which sits in the cap, is so enormous. Now, the quality of the tip of this one, the Pigment Micron, I just found incredibly disappointing. Because when you look at it under a microscope, it honestly looks like it's shaped like some kind of TP. What were they thinking when they designed that? I literally have no idea. So because it's shaped like a TP, when you draw upright, you get a very thin line. But when you, when you draw on an angle, you get a line which is ridiculously thick. Look how thick that is. This is meant to be a fine line, not something that gives off widely different variable line weights. I mean, the all-round quality and look of the thing also was quite disappointing as well. I mean, the, the writing seems to be... Look at the writing on it. It's like it goes on its own merry journey across the pen, up and down. It's really terrible. The barcode is out of alignment. And then when I put the cap on the back of the pen, I thought, oh yeah, that fits on quite snugly. But when I went to remove it, this happened. Can you see that? The plug on the back of the pen is coming off when I try and remove the cap. So if I pull the cap off and then leave the plug half undone, the ink will start drying out of the pen. It's pathetic. And not only is a tip like shaped like this or something, but it's only about 0.82 millimeters long. I mean, look at it compared to the Unipin. 
You can't tell me this one will last just as long. Maybe this is just a lemon because I've only got a sample size of one. But look, the Japanese have put their name on it three times. That's how proud they are that they've made this pen. If I was a proud Japanese man, I wouldn't be proud that I made this pen. I'd probably put a different country on there. So that was a bit disappointing. The Artline Drawing System Pen. And, well, I don't have much to say about this one. The length of the tip is 0.83 millimeters. It writes very smoothly. I mean, it's a quality product. And it comes with a pocket clip, which is quite incredibly sturdy. It has a, a decent amount of grip on it. I think these little plastic indentations were meant to provide some grip, but they, they basically do nothing. What's most disappointing about the grip on this pen is that Artline makes their much cheaper and nastier pens with much better grip. Got all this plastic ribbing here. But as I've demonstrated earlier, this pen comes with cheap, nasty ink. It is not worth looking at. I think the tip on this pen was nice and smooth as well. Nice and rounded, as you can probably see in the microscope overlay. So the Artline Drawing System pen is, you know, the second most expensive one on the list. And it's just kind of, it does everything right, basically, but it's just kind of unremarkable. I just don't see any reason why you would buy it over, the, over a cheaper uni pen, which comes with much more nib. Look at that. What about the Faber-Castell versus the Unipin? They probably last just as long as each other, I'm not sure. Now, let's talk about the Copic Multiliner SP, the most expensive one of the bunch. It costs more than four times the price as the Unipin or the Pentel point liner. So why would you buy such an expensive fine liner? Well, because this one is not disposable. It's actually completely refillable. And it also has a completely metal construction on the outside of it. So that seems like quite a good deal, doesn't it? So the metal provides, you know, much the same amount of grip as any of the others. Probably similar to Faber-Castell on the body. I think the Pentel Point Liner wins a grip competition on the body. No, but because the pen is slightly thicker than the rest, you know, it's quite comfortable to hold. Also, the quality of the nib is just, well, it's fantastic, basically. It feels a lot better than any of the others. I mean, you would actually have to compare one with the other immediately to feel the difference, which I have done, and I've come to the conclusion that this nib feels the best. It's just super, super smooth. And the length of the nib is 1.19 millimeters which, you know, is a reasonable length, and it should last a while. Now, I mentioned that this pen is refillable, didn't I? And that is true. So, you know, when you buy this pen, you might say to yourself, Oh boy, this pen's refillable. I'm going to save some money, even though it's more expensive. So I bought the pen, and when I left the shop, I heard the distant laughter of some Japanese CEO. Because I don't think this thing really classifies as a truly refillable pen. Let me demonstrate, okay? Right, let's get serious here. The way Copic wants you to refill this pen is to basically remove an enormous ink cartridge out the back of it, this thing, and replace this every time the ink runs out. So is this going to save you money? Well, the cost of one of these will cost you one of these. Okay, right. But no, it gets a bit worse because the nib also will wear out every couple of cartridges or so. So you'll also have to remove the nib and replace that. Now you might be wondering, how much does the nib cost? Well, the nib will cost you one of these. I don't know, is this thing truly refillable when all you're doing is basically replacing this each time? This is essentially a fine liner. You're just buying a new fine liner and inserting it in a metal body. 
which is actually vastly more expensive than one of these, unless it holds substantially more ink than these ones. So this is kind of like the inkjet printer of the pen world, really. Ooh, look at me. I'm refillable. Ooh. Oh, that would have been hilarious if that worked. But don't worry, it's not a total loss. Because this pen can be so easily taken apart, and the insides are so easily then accessible, it might be incredibly easy just to get a syringe and just drip your own ink into the cartridge. Then that would make it truly refillable. Then you would actually be saving money. So maybe you should just try refilling them uh, illegally. <laughs> One actual problem I have with this pen is that if you push the cap on, on the back too hard, like that, there's no satisfying snap. So you might be tempted to press it in too hard. And then when you try and take the cap off, the ink cartridge comes out. That's, um, that's pretty annoying. The cap also snaps onto the top with an incredibly loud click. Okay, now I should stop rambling and come to some kind of conclusion as to which pen is best. I think the best way to do this is to come up with a bunch of fake awards for each pen. The value award will go to, I think, these two. But I think the uni pen is slightly better value because I'm biased and I've used these for years and they last a long time. The I'm incredibly disappointed in whatever this thing was meant to be award goes to the Pigma Micron, which I'm also now going to give another award to, which is called the Toss It Across the Room Award. The Well, that's very nice but not worth upgrading to award goes to the Artline Drawing System pen, which is more expensive than the uni pin, but not really worth upgrading to, as far as I can see. The I'm not sure award what to give this award goes to the Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen Fine Liner. I mean, it's a nice pen. It draws a wonderful line, but the tip just feels a bit too fibrous for my liking, and you know the grip is just too thin. Yeah, it's just a good pen, but besides the incredible length of the nib it gives you, it's, I can't think of anything else to say about it. And I'm pretty sure 0.3mm was the smallest size I could find as well. So that might be a problem if you want to get a set that goes, you know, even smaller. The Look How Fancy I Am Award goes to the Copic Multiliner, which has the most premium feel about it, the smoothest nib, and a rather expensive ink refill cartridge replacement system. Oh, I did it again. Did I do that again? Yeah, get, get back in there. That's a bit of a disappointment. Just put it on lightly. Just, just gentle. Just, just that. That's enough. That, yes, that's better. Maybe just leave the cap off. Yeah, it's a pretty good pen. I wonder how much it costs per line. 0 0.3 millimeters. 0 0.35 millimeters. Tell me what the difference is. Why does 0 0.5 millimeters exist? What's the difference between that and that? How could you possibly see? 